All right, hello everybody and welcome to episode 9 of the Hockey Story series. As soon as the hockey player hangs up his skates, some might be able to say that life goes on and the person only has a certain amount of good years left in him before they pass away. Let's think about it, we end up seeing only Richard die, but his story will be for another day. And more recently, we end up seeing the man who scored the Stanley Cup clinching goal for the Leafs' last Stanley Cup win back in 1967 pass in the form of Jim Pappen. And that's not even mentioning Mike Bossy and Guy Lafleur, who both died after a battle with lung cancer. While some challenged the players for the title of the oldest living ex-NHL player, they could see the record held by Milt Schmidt be broken sometime soon. This is the story of Marcel Bonin, the last surviving member of the Montreal Canadiens dynasty that won five consecutive Stanley Cups from the late 1950s. In order for me to tell you this competitive story, let's go back to 1949 where the Montreal Knaves spent his next three years refining his game in the Quebec Senior Hockey League before earning a permanent spot with the Detroit Red Wings roster in 1952. And whilst he got off to a shaky start, only scoring 4 goals to go with 13 points in 37 games, the best has certainly yet to come. In order for Marcel to shape up and be better offensively, the Red Wings think it would be best for Bonan to bounce around in the lower levels some more. The subsequent 1953-54 season saw the young Ford at the time split the year with the Shearbrook Saints and the Edmonton Flyers respectively scoring combined 26 goals to go with 69 points. That would indeed be good enough for Marcel Bonin to be called back up to the Detroit Red Wings roster. After one season of toiling away in the minors, the Montreal Nay was able to shape up on the Detroit Red Wings roster, and from there he scored a more respectable 16 goals to go with 36 points in 69 games played. Although Marcel Bonin disappeared in the 1955 Stanley Cup playoffs scoring just 2 points, it didn't matter so much as the Red Wings clinched the Stanley Cup that year. It ended up being the first of 4 Stanley Cup titles he won. Shortly after this season, Bonan was involved in a 9-player trade which ended him up with the Boston Bruins on June 1st, 1955. His only season in Boston was not a very successful one as he has had his fair share of recent struggles scoring only 9 goals to go with 18 points in 68 games that year. His lack of production wasn't good enough to help the Bruins make the playoffs that year and Marcel was sent back to the Quebec Senior Hockey League, this time with the Quebec Aces. Following an impressive stint with the Quebec Aces, having scored 80 points in 68 games as well as 14 points in 10 playoff games, Marcel Bonin would be recalled to the NHL once again. Prior to the start of the 1957-1958 season, he would be claimed by his hometown team, the Montreal Canadiens, in the intra-league draft that year. It was in the last stretch of his career where Marcel Bonin was a very realistic player in capturing the Stanley Cup with his team in 1958, 59, and in 1960. In the process, he was instrumental in scoring the Stanley Cup winning goal in 1959, which was a dandy against Johnny Bauer of the Toronto Maple Leafs. The last two seasons saw Marcel Bonin put up similar numbers in the subsequent 1961 and 1962 seasons, respectively. Unfortunately, though, his career came to an abrupt halt following an on-ice collision with former teammate Pete Gauguin during a game on February 10, 1962, resulting in a concussion and thus ending the career of Marcel Bonin. Even though his career didn't end the way anyone would have liked, Bonan scored a respectable 97 goals to go with 272 points in 454 games played. And on top of that, the Montreal Nave won four Stanley Cups and three of them were with his hometown team. 
He also made the NHL All-Star Game roster five times in his career in 1954, 1957, 1958, 1959, and 1960. Not bad for a guy who split his time in the National Hockey League and the Quebec Senior Hockey League. In the years following his retirement, he ended up seeing his teammates on his side pass away, including Jacques Plante, who died in 1986, as well as Doug Harvey three years later in 1989. That's not even mentioning Maurice Racket Richard, who became the first player to score 500 goals in a career as well as 50 goals in 50 games, succumbing to abdominal cancer. In addition to the Rocket, Bernie Boom Boom Jeffreyon, who had recently turned 75 years old, died following a battle with stomach cancer. Funny enough, the Montreal Canadiens were set to retire his number 5 jersey to the Raptors on that day. Therefore, the rest of the 05-06 season, the Habs dedicated that year to Boom Boom's memory. Eight years later, Marcel Bonin ended up losing another valued teammate who was part of the Montreal Canadiens dynasty, and that is none other than Jean Beliveau. Beliveau, who scored the Stanley Cup winning goals in 1960 and 1965, passed away on December 3, 2014 following a stroke, and one year later, Bonin ended up losing teammate Dickie Moore, who scored the cup clinching goal in 1957. Half a decade later, he ended up losing fellow teammate and Montreal-born player Henri Richard. Henri scored cup clinching goals in 1966 and 1971, respectively. Did I tell you he won the Stanley Cup in his five or six years in his life? Anyway, like I said, that'll be a story for another day. Technically, Henri Richard died at the age of 84 on March 8, 2020 due to Alzheimer's disease. And because of his teammates' death, this effectively made Marcel Bonin the last surviving player from the Montreal Canadiens dynasty from the late 1950s. Not only that, but he's up for the challenge in tying the record for the longest living former NHL player, which is set by Milt Schmidt, who was in his 98 years before he passed away. Can Marcel Bonin break that record? You can tell me that in the comments down below. I would love to hear your opinion. But otherwise, thank you so much for listening, and I will see you in episode 10.